Hello everyone, I'm Kim and welcome to my sewing room. If you haven't visited my channel before, it's just me basically showing you what I have made the previous week and what I plan to make going forward. Not all my makes are garments. I like to sew and I do a bit of quilting. I dabble a little bit with tapestry and basically I'm just up for anything creative. So if anything piques my creative curiosity, I'll have a go at it. But primarily it is about clothes making. So to start off this video, I'm just going to go through what I'm wearing. So this top is McCall's 7360. Um, I have made it several times before and it's um, a really nice summer top. Um, it's pretty straightforward and I'm just going to refer back to my project sheet, my trusted project sheet. And I, I fill these out each time I make something so I can just keep um, a reference of the make. So if I do decide to make a pattern again going forward, then I have something to refer back to and if the if the sleeves for instance are too long or there is something I want to change next time I make it it will be on this sheet. So this um, shirt was originally made back in July 2023 and I made um, version C which is the long sleeve version and it recommended fabrics of medium lightweight woven fabric such as cham chambray, poplin, linen and crepe de chine and I've just made this out of 100% cotton. So I'll, I'll stand up and show you, show you it as it is. Um, so first of all it's got a, a mandarin collar, a flat collar and it's got a front placket which finishes um, mid bodice. It has um, a bust dart and a long sleeve and it also has a yoke at the back. Now the sleeves are um, sleeves which you can fold up and I like this pattern because when I fold the sleeves up you can see that this actual fold is quite low down. So you've got your little tab. I'll find my button somewhere, there it is. So you can see that the, the fold is still quite low down in the arm. And I quite like that. I don't want it to be above my elbow. I'm, I'm of an age now where I don't like to show the tops of my arms and I like anything sort of past my elbow and this shirt is excellent for that. And the nice thing about this fabric, um, this fabric I bought from a company called Atokri which is based in India and they do hand printed cottons and um, it's beautiful, it's so vibrant and the nice thing about this is it is batik. So batik is the same colour on the inside as it is on the outside. So when you do the fold in the sleeves, you don't get that um, ugly underside of fabric showing. So it's really nice fabric. Now I will say to you, if you do buy fabric from, um, from this company, they do some beautiful block printing when you get it just always wash the fabric separately because it's been hand dyed it's been hand printed and there's a lot of excess dye in their fabric so i throw i throw these sort of fabrics in the washing machine on their own with a few sheets of color fast um, give it a good wash and then when it comes out all that excess dye is out and the fabric is nice and soft and, and ready to go. Um, also if you buy from um, a top crew just be warned that 
Their fabrics are really narrow. They only do, well, this cotton in particular was um, 104 centimeters wide. And because of that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and because of that, I bought three and a half meters just to ensure that I could get all the pattern pieces out of it. And it is so cheap. Uh, for three and a half meters, I paid uh, nine pounds seventy six, and that didn't include postage and packaging. But that's just really amazing for three and a half meter meters of one hundred percent cotton. So um, that is my M seven three six zero. So in my video last week, I mentioned that I was going to make the sidewinder pants. Now the sidewinder pants are one of my make nine challenges. So I set about tracing off the pattern. So trace off the pattern, no problem at all. There were only five pieces to the pattern, so that didn't take very long. I'd already picked the fabric, which I showed you in my make nine video, and it was the um, a trouser suiting that had a very fine pinstripe down it um, so I'd already picked the fabric and I proceeded to cut out the fabric now <laughs> the only issue um, with the fabric um, to my detriment was that the fabric is the same on the back as it is on the front so when I stitched them all up um, I ended up with two right legs which was amazing because I had marked all of the pieces of fabric, fabric with right and left, um, wrong side and right side, and I still managed to get two right legs. And I was so annoyed with myself because, I mean, none of us likes to unpick, but not only had I sewn up the trouser leg, I'd also overlocked it. And the seam allowance was just one centimetre. So it wasn't a huge seam allowance to start with and thankfully when I did overlock it I didn't really take any of the seam allowance off but even so it just meant a lot of unpicking so in my frustration I threw them in the corner and just thought you know I can't be bothered and I went downstairs made myself a cup of tea and had a little sulk and um, then I came to my senses so I came back into my sewing room and and thought to myself, oh, you know, I'll I'll throw them into the whip box. But then I thought, well, even if I throw them into the whip box, I still have to unpick them at some point. So I thought, right, just get on with it and unpick them. But initially I couldn't bring myself to do it. So I, I got myself sidetracked. So I did go and visit my whip box and I thought oh, what I want to do is I want to pull something out so that I can complete it and just finish something. So in my whip box, I found a cushion, another cushion. And I found um, this cushion. So the front of this had already been completed. And all the cushion needed was a zip inserted and the back stitched on. And so it, I knew it wouldn't take very long, but I just needed to make something and get it finished. And all of this fabric is calf facet. And I, I bought the fabric a while ago and it was just a five inch charm pack and I think it was called Cool and I made out I made my little squares up which you've seen me make before and I put my usual contrasting square in the middle to make each of those um, squares pop and I stitched them together quilted it on some um, soft and stable by Annie put my zip in and put my back on and it's finished so I finished it so I took it downstairs <laughs> And um, my husband saw it and just rolled his eyes and just thought, oh God, not another cushion. But he said, I really like that cushion. So I said, well, you know, you can have it. <laughs> it's yours. Um, he's been struggling a little bit with his back. 
so he said um, could I just have it to support my back so I was quite happy to hand it over to him and for it to be used rather than sitting on my cushion chair for me to admire so I found a really nice um, pillow insert and it's um, goose feather and duck down so it's really squidgy and soft so it has really helped his back so I just nicked it back out of his seat so that I could show you so that will go back down um, to where he sits so I'm really pleased with that and I felt quite chuffed with myself but even so I I still can bring myself to unpick the, the trousers so I set about making some more three and a half inch squares so you've seen these before I mean I make these all the time and I did set about making quite a few and I just like the idea that I can use um, fabric that's just been sitting around in my scrap box for ages and it just makes a small a small indent and these things I use for not only cushions but cosmetic bags and bags and and other bits and bobs so I just um, made a huge bundle of them and they will go into the drawer with the others and then when I get the urge to make something with them I've got a nice selection to pick from so finish those and then by this time I was ready to go and revisit my side wider pants and then start unpicking so I unpicked them all and, and made them up and they worked you know they came together quite quickly I didn't make any alterations to the pattern because I just want to wanted to see how they fit using the measurements provided on the pattern so I went by my hip measurement and um, I made them up and I did make them up with a tiny little design um, addition so I haven't tried I, I haven't got them on at the moment because what I will do is I'll put a little video of them in so you can see them better um, on the full length because you won't be able to see them if I stand up in here so these are them so they have a, a front um, band and the back is elasticated and the elastic in the back is it's about three inches deep and it sits very uh, very snugly in the channel in the back so there's no movement at all of the elastic so it does fit really well and you can put these on without um, a zipper so they stretch you can get them on and they all the elastic is at the back so it sits out of sight and um, it feels really nice because you have uh, this extra little bit of fabric here for your bottom so because I've been making a lot of orange tops lately I decided um, that I would put in some orange piping into the twist so the twist that runs down these trousers runs from the the side pocket and it curves around the back of the leg initially I thought it curved around the front but it doesn't it curves around the back of the leg and I'll show you in the, the drawing of um, the pants and I finished them put them on went downstairs and showed my husband and said to him what do you think of them so first of all he said well one leg's longer than the other so I looked down and I thought yeah you're right one leg is longer than the other it was an inch and a half longer than the other so I'd obviously not measured them properly so more I'm picking but I thought great okay so um, as I was walking around I felt that they were they were really nice they they fit really well on the hips but they were just a tad too big in the hip in the waist sorry and just too um too baggy in the leg so I have made um, a few notes on my my project sheet when I make these again and I will make them again because they are really nice trousers and they're very comfortable and I will make them again but I think what I might do is I might go down a size 
but keep my hips at the same size. So just tapering slightly in the waist and let's just take some of that fullness out of the legs. So, um, so you will see from the video what I mean and, I, and hopefully you will like them. Any comments, just let me know. Okay, so that's my finished project for this week. Bit of a, a long journey, but we got there in the end. So also this week, I have finished a pair of socks. So I've got um, these finished, just a pair of plain um, vanilla socks. Um, primarily, I knit vanilla socks because there's no pattern on them. And I knit plain socks because I like to show off the effect of the wool. So they're a bit baggy at the moment because they need to go in the wash and it just you know tightens them up slightly. Um, so they're finished. Now I I did think that I might stop knitting socks because it's that time of year where normally it starts getting a little bit warmer but even though it's trying to get warmer here it is definitely very cold and I have been making a few summer tops lately in the hope that the weather will get nicer and you can start coming out of coats and going into jackets but it's it's just not it's not getting warmer it's just very wet at the moment and dark and cold so I have thought that what I might do is I might sort of take a step back and start making some warmer clothes that I can wear now rather than waiting for spring summer to kick in so I'm going to continue um, making my socks. I bought some new yarn last, you saw last week, the new yarn that I bought for sock making. So I'm just going to carry on with that. So that's my finished sock project for this week. So last week you saw that I had bought a book um, and it was the Miller Fiore Quilts for by Willine Hammerstein. Now I love her quilts. Um, Willeen is a EPP quilter so she does English paper piecing so I thought what I would do is I would pick one of her quilts I would use all of my or quite a lot of my scrap fabric left over from the Queen of Diamonds quilt that I'm also working on so that I could use some of that beautiful tulip pink fabric um, but it didn't it hasn't worked out that well so I, I have done what I normally do I go sort of rushing into something without sitting down and thinking about it so I'll I'll talk you through my process so got my book pick the quilt so this is the quilt that I like so this quilt is named um, raindrops are falling on my head I don't particularly like the colour but that's irrelevant. But what I do like is I like these rosettes. So the plan was to make all the rosettes up using my scrap tulip pink fabric and then just bring it all together further down the line. So for those of you that don't know what EPP is, um, English paper piecing, and generally you, um, you need to work from a set of templates. So I bought my templates from a company called Sew and Quilt and I bought the acrylic templates and the paper pieces. Um, you don't always need to buy the acrylic templates but you definitely do need the paper pieces. So I bought the acrylics and a, a starter kit of the, the actual quilt raindrops are falling on my head. So these are what the acrylic templates look like so you can see there's a three eighth of an inch seam allowance around it and this bit is the actual shape of um, what you're hoping to get out of that template so you would get your template you'd put it down on your fabric and then you would cut your fabric out around the template so that's your fabric then you would get your paper piece, your corresponding paper piece, and then that would sit on the piece of fabric. And then you glue, using a glue stick, 
one that I bought last week, glue. Don't need a lot of glue, just need it to hold it temporarily down so that once it's stitched, it doesn't matter if um, it comes loose, but you just need it um, glued long enough so that you can hand stitch it. So when it's glued, it effectively looks like this. Okay, and then when you've made um, enough, so I needed eight of these for a rosette. So when you've made enough, you then stitch all of your rosettes, um, your pieces together and it makes a rosette. So this is my first rosette. So I also mentioned last week uh, the magic mirror. So I used my magic mirror to cut these pieces of fabric. Um, so they they are the same all, all the way around and they make a really effective rosette. So I made this one and I also made this one. And they're beautiful, they're lovely, and they are from the leftover fabric that I have from my Queen of Diamonds quilt. And I had hoped that I would be able to make another quilt out of um, the remnants of that quilt. Um, but I have realised by um, using Tula's fabric that her fabric doesn't have, it has repeats but the repeats are huge so you would need a lot of fabric to keep producing enough of these rosettes to make a whole quilt. So then I thought right I need to diversify a bit and um, maybe just not work on one range of fabrics but um, work on, an, on another so I made this rosette so it's, I've divided up the um, pieces so that I could get more out of the fabric. So I wanted to try and keep the fabrics so that they were in a certain range. Now I don't know, I don't know a great deal about um, colour theory and I bought one of these um, colour wheels. Um, and I have read a little bit up about all the different um, ways you should select fabric for a quilt. So the plan was that um, I would use the I would use a contrasting green for the diamonds that went around the rosette, a really dark green to make the rosettes, you know, sort of pop a bit and show up a bit more in the quilt. And that I would use um, what's known as a contemporary split. So if you see here, you can see this little diagram here goes off into um, different colourways. So I was going to do a five way colour split. So I was going to pick colours in this section here, this section here, the middle, this one and the purple. So it gave me a lot of choice. And if you look at the rosettes that I've made, you can see they fall quite well into that colour range. And and that was the plan. But um, as I was going through all of my scraps, I realised, you know, I would probably need to buy more fabric to finish the quilt. And that wasn't my intention. So I, I have a little bit of a dilemma. Do I carry on and just make the quilt up with any scrap fabric that I have um, outside of that colour range or do I buy some more fabric and just make it up and so yeah so let me know what you think because I'm debating whether to just set it aside and maybe think about picking up picking it up later but I must admit when you make when you make things like this and they look so beautiful and I made these using using my magic mirror um, which I am yet to show you how to use properly but you can see they're just beautiful I mean these these two came out of the same fabric and they are so different but they are the same colorway which I like 
so I don't know what to do so let me know what you think and um, I'll decide whether to keep going ahead with this this project or not purchases um really all I've all I've purchased this week are you know just the the acrylic templates for that quilt and also all the different um paper pieces for that quilt so I haven't haven't spent a lot um but well, I don't know what to do so I'm on an R in so let me know what you think I don't know what to make next week because I had struggled so much with the sidewinder pants uh it took me a lot longer well they took me a lot longer to make than they should have done and by this time I, I'm I've already got in mind what I'm going to make for the following week but because of the weather not being as nice and it's still wet and cold I might make something in sweatshirt fabric so that's going around in my head so I think for today that is it and I I hope you enjoyed the content and I haven't waffled too much because um I don't like it when um, a plan doesn't come together, but I don't know. Let me know what you think and I, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you all next week. Take care. Bye.